What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with the week's hottest topics. This is the hot topics for the week of January 17th up until January 22nd, you guys. This has been kind of a slow week, so it's not a lot of stuff for me to talk about, but there is one important thing that we definitely have to discuss, you guys. So, without further ado, sit back and let us discuss what has happened this week. What's trending, that is. All right, you guys. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the inauguration that happened yesterday. Um, what was yesterday? The 20th, right? Yes, yeah, January 20th. The inauguration of joe biden and as the you know the president of the united states and kamala harris as the first vp you know as the first female vp of the united states the first female black south asian vp of the united states you know i woke up and um i looked at the i had it on abc and it was just a breath of fresh air it was just like a dead weight has been lifted off his shoulders and you know it, it just really felt really good to you know just wake up yesterday knowing that the events of the past four years a blimp on the radar at this point because I, when I woke up I watched ABC and Good Morning America was on and they showed you know who as he was leaving the White House and it was just like goodbye and good riddance it was just like out with the old out with the old in with the new <clears throat> and by no means am i saying you know that joe biden is going to be the best president there there ever was i don't think any of them can really say that they're the best but i can say that they can all each person george bush included can say that they contributed something to american history um if it be a good or a bad but some each of them have done something with the exception of you know who and you know leading up to the inauguration i was on pins and needles just to be honest with you guys you know especially after the insurrection that happened two weeks ago at the capitol i was just on pins and needles you know you you could see them setting up for the inauguration you could see the barbed wire fences you could see everything you could see them with the security detail they were vetting people out. There were some that they had to, you know, let go of because they found some stuff in their past that was questionable. Um, but yeah, leading up to the insurrection, it just it was just so so much angst and anxiety in me just looking at what happened with that. Because, you know, people were talking about finding Nancy Pelosi hanging um Mike Pence. And it's just for what? Because your guy lost the election. Is that what we're doing now? It just didn't make sense to me. And then, you know, like I said, I was just fearful. I was like, you know, God forbid anything bad happens to this man or Kamala on the day of, you know, inauguration. So I was just on pins and needles. And then, you know, at the capitals, you know, they were talking about doing some things. Now, I know on when not Wednesday, on Tuesday, I was watching the local news here in Dallas. And they were showing some stuff out there in Austin. And there were some nutcases that were in Austin armed. I don't know what they were armed to do, but they were armed out there in Austin. Which, again, it makes no sense because your guy lost. You want to do all this stuff. And then some of you know who supporters are still saying it was a fraud. It was a fraud. And when you ask them for proof, they can't give you any proof. They'll tell you that, oh, well, there's video footage in Georgia of them pulling out the ballots. OK, if that was true proof, why wasn't it presented in court to the to the courts? The courts laughed him out because each time his his lawyers went into court, they always said the same thing. This is not about fraud because they did not want to purge themselves because they knew that they were fucking lying. It's 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 it's. it's it's stupid at this. It's stupid to even argue about it. Ow, 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 my finger, my finger, my finger. It's just stupid to argue about it. Like, really, truly, it is. Like, wait until they kept saying, wait until the Supreme Court is going to overturn it. 
um, Mike Pence is going to overturn it. XYZ is going to overturn it. XYZ, XYZ, he lost by a lot, you know? So just accept it, move on with your life. And um, what else? So yeah, it was a good day. I saw him do his little goodbye speech. I saw him and the family board Air Force One. Goodbye, good riddance, peace out to you. Um, you know, he was like, if they raise your taxes, I told you so. <laughs> Whatever. He's an idiot. Thank God I don't have to see him anymore. Don't have to speak about him. I'm not talking about that, you know, the trial that the Senate is doing. I'm not talking about any of that. We are going to go from a positive point at this place. At this point, we're going positive. Um... So yeah, the inauguration, I loved it. I love the fact that it snowed there. You know, I was like, and I, I wasn't on Twitter, I was on my Facebook page, which I don't use that that often. But I was on Facebook and I was like, wow, snow. You know, snow was so pure and white, it's pure. And I was like, wow, you get snow when pure, e you know, we, we just got rid of the pure evil that was in the White House. And then comes down the snow, you know, ushering in a new, you know, I did like Joe Biden's speech, his inaugural speech. I definitely did like his speech. You know, he's talking about once again, unity. He's telling people that, you know, we need to stop looking at, you know, um, rural versus, um, urban conservative versus liberal, um, red versus blue. We all need to be on one accord at this point. And I definitely agree with that. Uni unify the country and he even spoke to the ones who didn't vote for him he's still a president for them that is something you know who never did it was always the dims this the dims that the msm mainstream media this Ugh. he attacked anyone who didn't agree with what he said which that's not presidential at all um, before you know who left office, he also did manage to pass out a hundred odd something pardons. Three of them, I know, I know three of the people who he passed out pardons to. Steve Bannon, he passed out a pardon to him. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and most of them were for fraud. Most of them were for fraud because there was a mayor or someone from Kwame. I can't think of what his last name is. He was in jail for fraud. He pardoned Little Wayne and he pardoned Kodak Black. I don't really give a fuck about either one of them. And the sad part is I used, I, I used to be a diehard Wayne fan. But when Wayne got up there and kissed you know whose ass, I was done with him at that point. And he really needs to fix them dreads. He look like, he looks like E.T. E.T. phone home. Like I just want him to either wash those, wash those locks or either cut, or either cut them. Something's got to go with those locks because they're not what it do. Not what it do. You know, also with the inauguration, it was so nice to, see it, you know, because I don't watch, I don't watch, you know, who's the inauguration whatsoever. I, I tuned out. I, I, I passed on it. It was so nice to see, you know, former presidents, you know, former President Clinton and, um, and you know, um, Secretary, you know, um, Senator, Clinton, um, you know, Hillary Clinton. It was nice to see, although I wasn't a fan of him. George Bush and um, his and Laura Bush, that is his wife, right? Yeah, George and his wife, my favorite, President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. Man, when I tell you that hair was laid to the gods, that outfit was on point, that belt buckle, you did that. You did the damn thing. I will say Kamala looked amazing in her, you know, she looked really good. You know, I even got a tear in my eye when Kamala, you know, was, when she was sworn in, I ain't gonna lie to you guys, your boy over here, he really started crying because it, it's, it's, it's crazy to say at this point in American history, we have our first ever female VP. And she's an African, she's African-American. 
and she's South, you know, she's South um, Asian American as well. So it's just, it's, so, it's, 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 it's amazing, man. I can't even put it into words how great it feels. You know, I feel this, I felt the same way when we got President Obama as the first African American president. You know, things are going to look up for, things are going to look up and up and up. So, yeah, when she was sworn in, you know, it just really touched me so much because it just it, it inspired. It's an inspiring story. And especially, her, you know, her background, because I actually watched CNN talk about her background, you know, the other night before the inauguration. You know, she's a Howard University alum, HBCU in the building. Like, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. So. I, you know, like I said before, I don't expect for Joe and Kamala to be the best. They're going to make some mistakes. We, we, it's, it's inevitable. No, like I said before, no president has done everything that they've said that they were going to do. But I hope they are able to, you know, achieve some of the things that they, that's on their agenda and their missions. I do hope for that. Number one, I hope y'all get the stimulus package passed and student loans. <laughs> Those are the two things that really mean a lot to me because I got student loan debt and that stimulus package. If you're going to give me 14000 you know, 1400 damn, 14000 that would be nice. If you're going to give me the 1400 to 2000 whichever one you're going to give me, I'll take it. So, yeah. I enjoyed the inauguration. I enjoyed, I loved, like I said, I loved Biden's speech. And like, like I said, I don't have to say, you know who anymore. I can say President Biden. I can say, I can say President once again. Because even with Bush, I will say President Bush. And again, Bush wasn't my favorite president, but I could at least say President Bush. You know who could never say it. And will never and will never say it ever in my life. Will never utter that those words with that credence name. Um, what else do I want to talk about? What else? Our first lady. She looks amazing. She looked amazing as well. Our new first lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Now you know I know some of you know who supporters is like. Um, you know why does she why does she just drop the doctor? She's not an actual doctor. That is so fucking stupid. <laughs> That is ridiculous to me. Are you guys that mad that your first lady is all over social? You can find, you can Google pictures of her, her, her tits and her hoo-ha. Are you mad about that? That your first lady ain't got your, your first lady that just left had no class. I'm sorry. Not sorry, but yeah. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the inauguration Lady Gaga. She did, um, did she do the national anthem? Or the Star Spangled Band? She did, she performed, she did, was it the Star? I always get those, now I always get those two confused. The national anthem and the Star Spangled Band are always, okay. She did something. She was dressed like, I, I was looking at her, I'm like, girl, is this a part of the Hunger Games or something? But I was like, you know what, maybe she felt like we had been in the Hunger Games for the last four years, so who the hell am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Um, she sang. It was typical Lady Gaga. I wouldn't have expected anything else, any less from Gaga. Um, J Lo. Let's talk about J Lo. When I first heard that J Lo was gonna be there, I was like, "What the hell is she gonna do? A shimmy and a shake like <laughs> J Lo? We don't typically think of J Lo for vocals." Y'all that's on social media, y'all are petty as fuck. Y'all are the pettiest motherfuckers I have ever saw in my life. Y'all are so petty talking about that Ashanti was in the back singing. <laughs> I hate social media. Like y'all were saying that Ashanti was in the back singing. Um, who else? Um, who else? Who else was it? The country singer, I forget his name. Garth Brooks. I like because I like Garth Brooks. But I'm when it comes to country, I'm more of the female country singer fans, like, you know, the likes of Carrie Underwood, um, Reba McIntyre, uh, Shania Twain, 
um, I actually like Lady A. That's one of my favorite groups. Lady A. Uh, who else is it? What's the girl from Lindell? What is her name? She's from Lindell, which is not far from my home, and I should really know. Miranda Lambert. God damn. Oh, I like um Blake as well. But yeah, Garth Brooks sang um, Amazing Grace. Um, I'm not, it's not, I was, it wasn't a bad performance. It was actually a good performance. For me, when I hear Amazing Grace, I'm used to hearing, no shade, but I'm used to hearing my people sing it and they put some soul into it. I'm not being shady. I'm really not being shady, but he did a good job. It just wasn't what I was used to growing up in a, in a black church, but he did do that. Oh, the one thing that I cannot forget to mention the poet laureate amanda gorman she stole the show i know people on social media was talking about her hair i'm not gonna talk about the the young girl's hair i'm not about to talk about her hair because that's neither here nor there because her poem when i say that that pierced my soul who she gave me i mean she literally is a reincarnation of the great Maya Angelou. Her words. I mean, she's not, she's not, she's not my, she's not Maya Angelou, but my God, in time, she could be as big and as great as she was. Rest in peace, Maya Angelou. Rest in peace to her. But yeah, that poem was everything to me. Um, let me know what you guys thought about the inauguration. I know I kind of stumbled a little bit. I didn't take notes. I didn't put no notes down. So this is just free form for me. But yeah, get down in the comment section and let me know what you guys thought about the inauguration. What was what was your highlight? Or what did you guys think about, you know, Gaga, um, J-Lo, Garth Brooks? What did you guys think about, you know, Biden's speech? What do you guys look for? What do you guys hope for with the future with this administration? I know that he signed, you know, some executive orders last night, overturning some of the things that you know who had put in place. Um, what else? So yeah, that's about it. I know that you know he's he got some of his his people sworn in. I know that um, you know he wants to start his COVID relief bill going into next week, but also they're talking about doing that, you know, the, doing a the Senate trial. But they're trying to work. I know that they're trying to work that out, how to get his agenda first, you know, work on his agenda and then later in the afternoon do the tr do the trial. Again, I'm not covering a trial because, you know, who is gone and I don't want to discuss him at all anymore. So it is what it is with him. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and we're going to move on. All right, you guys, so the next thing I want to talk about is a bit of family drama with Wendy Williams and her brother, Tommy. So I was scrolling through the shade room. You know, actually, I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and I saw it on the shade room where Wendy was on her show and she was addressing Tommy. And I'm like, oh, Wendy never does this. I mean, she always talks about other people's business, but she never puts hers out there. And, you know, the whole thing was Tommy said that Wendy didn't come to their mother's funeral. Well, Wendy is saying that, yes, she did come to their mother's funeral. And Tommy, you got into it with one of, um, you know, a younger family member at the funeral. And, you know, she said that she, Big Kev and Little Kev, after that, they went out to eat. And the next day, he came out again. He, he says something. She came back on the show the next day. She said that's the last time she's going to address it. And she made a few, I'm, I don't know if these were idle threats or not, but she made a few threats, you know, like, Tommy, stop. Because I don't want to have to, you know, put your business out there. She's like, you know, look at my dress. You like it? I'm like, so are you, are, are you trying to say that your brother likes to wear women's dresses? Is that, a, is that what you're trying to say? Are you trying to shame him? Wendy. People call you a man in a dress. And, you know, people call you a man 
Um, and and that's just that's just that. And we're going to leave it at that. My thing with that whole situation is, God, it's ugly. It's ugly. You know, I don't like when I can. I don't like that kind of stuff. Like, that's one of the reasons that I don't use Facebook because majority of my family is on Facebook. Now, the family that I grew up with, they don't do kind. they don't do that kind of stuff. They don't put the family business all over social media. We keep it. We keep it in. We keep it between the family. We don't let it come to social media. We keep it in house. We are. We argue and we fuss with each other. Now, my biological side, my, my birth mother, they are the complete opposite. They post everything on social media. If they get into it one, one another, they post it. Like I've had a few of them. Like if I'm just tweet, if no, how about I say tweet? If I just post something just random, and you know it, it might seem like I'm talking about somebody, they'll come at me. Who you talking about? Who you talking about? First of all, mind your motherfucking business. And I've told I've told some of them that mind your business. This ain't got shit to do with you. If I wanted to say something to you, I will come directly to you. I'm not afraid of any of you guys. So don't come over here with that bullshit of who you talking about. It ain't you. If I was talking about you, you would know it. So that's how. I'm, so when I saw that with Wendy and um, Tommy, I was just like, Ugh, this is going to get ugly quickly. And I mean, at this particular time with these two, I mean, I know Tommy is saying that Wendy didn't come to the funeral. He said Kevin came to the wake. But Wendy didn't come to the funeral. Tommy, here's my thing. With, here's my thing with that. Not everybody has to come to the funeral. You do know that, right? Like, I'm the type of per I'm a person. I don't like funerals. Honestly, God, I don't like funerals. I don't like going to them. You know, most people go to a funeral for closure or to say their you know to say their final goodbyes. But if I feel like, you know, the person and I, we had a, a great relationship, we had closure, then I don't feel like I need to come to the funeral. You, if they knew I loved them, they know that I'm going to miss them, I don't really need to come to the funeral. Like I've had, you know, in the last, what, three years, I've had two of them, I had my, on my, on, with my mother, well, technically, my biological mother, if I'm going by this, they it would be my great great aunt and my great great uncle. They passed away, and I didn't go to the funeral. But that didn't mean that I didn't love them any less, because I really I loved, especially my great aunt. You know, my great great aunt. She was so close to my my um my my mother who raised me. They were as close as could be, and you know she would always call the house. And if I would answer the phone, she would talk to me for a few minutes. She asked me, how am I doing? And then she'd be like, where's your mom at? And I'm like, oh, she's here. She's like, let me talk to her. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, and I didn't go to my, like I said, I didn't go to my aunt's funeral and I didn't go to my uncle's funeral. Now, my uncle, I didn't go to his funeral because he just lived too damn far away from me. And I just did not want to make that drive. But my aunt, she lives here in Dallas and I just didn't want to go. Like, you know, I didn't want to go because it just wasn't for me. So... You know, and that's like I said, some people just don't like funerals. It's I know when we get there, you know, that we always say it's a it's a joyous occasion. We're there to celebrate the person's life. We are there to celebrate a life. But at the same time, we're still mourning this person. And like with my mother, I honest to God, you guys, if I really didn't want to go to my mother's funeral. But I'm like, this is my mom. I have to be I want to I don't have to be here. I want to be here. But leading up to it, I was like, you know, I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Even my grandmother. I was and I was a pallbearer from my grandmother's funeral. I didn't I actually didn't even volunteer. My family just said I was a pallbearer. But, um, you know, but they asked me after they volunteered me, they said, do you, is this what you want to do? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Because after they, after they thought about it, they were like, as close as I was to my grandmother, they were like, do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, why not? 
So yeah, and, and my grandmother's funeral, and my grandmother's funeral was super packed. But, you know, it's just, you know, not everybody wants to go to a funeral. If you want to go to a funeral to say your goodbyes to your mom, that is you. Like with my mother's funeral, my aunt on my mother, my aunt on my maternal, on my birth mother's side, you know, we had been talking and she was like, Jerome, I'm coming to the funeral. I'm like, okay, that, I'm, I'm, I'm like, come on. I'm like, I'm not telling you not to come to the funeral. So my birth mother, she told me she was going to come to the funeral. And then, you know, the day, I think the day before the funeral, she texted me and she said she's not going to be able to make it. So the day of my mother's funeral, my aunt was talking to me and she was like, I'm so mad at you, you know, at um, her sister, my biological mother. And I'm like, why are you mad at her? She was like, because she should be here. I'm like, you are correct. She probably should be here. And she said, and I'm mad at her because she didn't come. I'm like, that, you know, and I have to tell her, I'm like, that doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, you are so, she's like, why are you so calm about it? I'm like, I'm calm because for me, the only person that has to live with that is her, not me. It's between her and God. And, you know, she has to live with that. <clears throat> she has to live with that. And I know what it, and I know what the issue is. She and my mom, before she passed, they weren't in a good, they were not in a good spot. They were not in a good place with each other. They hadn't had a conversation with each other in about four years or so because we all have fallen out over my grandfather. And she wasn't in a good space with her. And I'm like, that's something that she has to live with. It's not something that I can make right for her. You know, I'm like, you know, the least, I'm like, she could have come. But I'm not going to harp on it. I mean, you could have come and said goodbye to the person who did something so selfless for you. She took in your child, loved your child as if he was your was her own, which I was her own. But I'm like, I don't hold that. I don't hold that against her. I'm like, you were there, right? She said, yeah. I said, I was there, right? <clears throat> she said, yeah. I said, that's all that matters. We both and the rest of the family were able to say our goodbyes to her. And that's all that matters. Now, and I said, if she found some kind of way to say a goodbye to her, then she did it in her own way. I'm not mad at her for not coming to the funeral. And I actually told her that in the text message. I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I'm not upset. You know, you have your reasons for not wanting to come. She says she got sick. I believe her. I'm not going to say, you know, otherwise. So, yeah, in a nutshell, Kevin, you can't dictate who comes and who doesn't come to a funeral different pe people grieve in different ways so it might like i god i have two i have an aunt and i have a cousin and at funerals it was my grand my great great my great 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 I think she was my great, great, great grandmother. Let's think. Let's think. Grandmother, great, my mother, great, great. So yeah, she was my great, great. It's the second great. It's the great, great. So yeah, it was my great, great grandmother. Her funeral. She lived to be a hundred and. I believe she was 109 years old when she passed, I think. Yeah, because the year she passed away, she would have been 110. She died January, oh my God. She died, she died, she passed away January 16th, 2008. I remember the date exactly. I remember, I remember it exactly. Because it was a few months shy of my birth, it was seven months, literally shy of my birthday. But yeah, she passed January, <clears throat> you know, 16th, 2008. So she was, she would have been 110 the year that she passed away. And at the funeral, my great aunt, her daughter, and my cousin, they're extra. And like I say, people have different ways of grieving. Like my aunt and my cousin, you know, everybody's in the funeral crying, right? Well, my aunt and my cousin are always the loudest ones crying. 
God forbid, I don't know why, but they're always the loudest ones. So that's why I said people have different ways of grieving and we can't judge that. So I'm not, I'm, if Wendy went to the funeral and she didn't go to the funeral, I don't really care. That's her decision. Uh, Tommy, you can't dictate what she does. I didn't mean to spend that long on this subject, but let's move on you guys. All right, you guys. So, yeah, it really wasn't much to talk about this week. So now we're going to switch over to some small talk. Let's give two birthday shout outs. Actually, let's give three birthday shout outs. Dolly Parton had a birthday this week. Um, James Earl Jones had a birthday. He turned 90. And um, Betty White had a birthday on Sunday. I was watching the Golden Girls rerun. It if you guys don't know anything about me, I love the Golden Girls. Like, I'll watch the Golden Girls all day long because it comes on on Sundays on TV Land. And it comes, she, Betty White turned 99. Wow, she is, thank God my girl is still here with us. But yeah, Betty White turned 99 on Sunday. Um, James Earl Jones turned um, 90. I don't know when his birthday was. And like I said, Dolly Parton. Is Dolly's how old is Dolly Parton? Let's look and see how old Dolly is. 75, I was correct. Oh, so she was just a little bit, she was um six years younger than my mother was. What well, would be? Um, so yeah, Dolly Parton, James Earl Jones, and um Betty White. But yeah, Betty White. Um I watch Golden Girls all the time. I watch it on TV Land, I watch it on <laughs> The Hallmark Channel. I watch it all the time. I even have the DVDs of the Golden Girls. I love the Golden Girls. I love I love Lucy. I, I would watch that all day, every day, too. My best friend used to ask me, she was like, how do you watch black and white TV television shows? Because she, she can't stand it. She doesn't like black and white whatsoever. And I'm like, it's easy. Like, I mean, there's nothing different about, I mean, although, yes, it's black and white and there's color. I feel like black and white is better to be quite honest with you because black and white there's a certain mystery I guess you could say because you know everyone knew that um, Lucille Ball's hair was red but with black and white you can tell anything everybody looked the same on black and black and white so yeah I, 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 I enjoyed it um what else in honorable mentions Congratulations go out to T.S. Madison. I was watching Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta last week and T.S. Madison has a show on WeTV. So congratulations go out to T.S. Madison for that one. Also, the funny thing about WeTV is I know a lot of people paid for, um, what's that app? What is that app? Zeus Network. People pay for Zeus and to watch The Real Black China but it's not being shown on WeTV. I wonder if they'll eventually get to this point where they'll show um, Chances show on, I wonder if they'll show Chances. I wonder if they will show Tokyo Tony's show that she did. Who else did a show on there? Jocelyn's Cabaret. Actually, they are going to do, actually Jocelyn's Cabaret is coming to WeTV. I heard, I've heard that. Jocelyn's Cabaret is coming to WeTV. I'm almost positive of that one. I th I'm almost positive of that one. Oh, y'all got to be pissed that y'all paid for that shit when they are going to put that shit on cable network. Jocelyn, I'm, if I'm, I'm almost positive it's going to WeTV. Yep, WeTV acquired the first seasons of Zeus Networks, The Real Black China, and Jocelyn's Cabaret. Y'all niggas literally pay for that shit, <coughs> and they outsource that shit for free. Ooh, so yeah, um, that's that. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, and then the last thing that I want to do is I want to give a congrats I want to give a shout out to Delonte West now I know recently he was you know 
and I actually know what bridge he was under. He was he was in, under a bridge here in Dallas. It was on 75. And, you know, um, Dallas Mavericks owner um, Mark Cuban got him, you know, into a rehab facility. And now Delonte West is working at the rehab center. That actually helped him get back on his feet. And that is a really, really good thing to say. You know, he was able to go and get, you know, the help that he needed. And now he's there to be a, a, a helpful hand and a voice to others who need it. So, you know, we got to give a, a shout out and a congratulations to Delonte West, man. And that is going to wrap it up for the week's hottest topics, you guys. We do this every single week, same time. Try to be the same time, same place, same channel. Um, as always, you guys, do me a solid favor. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wear your mask. Wash your hands and socially distance. And we'll see you guys again next week. So later on tonight, you guys can expect the video for Bell Collective and Life at the Lockup. Hopefully. It's going to be a long night. If you don't see it tonight, you'll see it. If you don't see it tonight, well, technically I'm recording this on Thursday, but it'll be uploaded on Friday. But if you guys don't see it later tonight, you can expect it on Saturday morning, both of them. But I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.